the first use case uh, here that I want to talk about um, is a SQL join operator on Druid lookups. Uh, so classic Druid lookups uh, have been around for a while. Um, they satisfied some of the same cases as joins, although they're not as flexible. One way they're not as flexible is that they're string to string key value mappings. So there's only one key and one value. Um, lookups are really in Druid treated as functions, uh, or they were until now treated as functions. Um, so a classic Druid lookup, let's say you wanted to take the destination airport ID um, and get the airport name instead of the airport ID. You would write this query down here, select lookup of the destination airport um, using the air underscore port lookup, which is a, a key value mapping um, in this scenario we defined, a key value mapping of airport ID to airport name. Count star from flights fact, group by one. So we're getting all the airport uh, names uh, along with how many flights are involved with that airport. Um, and there's, there's a couple interesting things about this, about the way this query is written. Um, one is that we are doing some of the same use cases as you might do with the fact that dimension join in, in traditional SQL. Um, we don't actually write the join keyword. So this is classic Druid SQL, which didn't support joins. Um, so we don't, we don't write the join keyword. Um, we name the lookups. So this lookup is called air underscore port, and it's just provided as a string. Um, and it's provided as a string input into this lookup function. And so really the way that we model lookups uh, in the past versions of Druid was um, as these, these sort of magical things you loaded out of band. Uh, there's a whole separate system in Druid for loading lookups. You load them out of band um, and the SQL layer doesn't really have deep understanding of what they are or what their schemas are. It just, you can refer to them by name as, as strings, um, pass them into this lookup function, which will then apply them. Um, so the first use case we want to tackle with uh, SQL on Druid is um, being able to do real SQL joins against these classic Druid lookups. Um, and so the same idea here, uh, the same query idea here, but with the join keyword. Um, so now we have flights fact, inner join, airport join um, on flights fact dot dest airport ID equals airport join dot code. And so you have, um, there's a couple of interesting things here. This, this query actually is going to run um, under the hood. It's going to run using uh, the classic Druid lookup, um, but the SQL layer now understands about it, now knows how it works. Um, this actually should say inner join. It should say lookup.air underscore port. I should have edited this, uh, but that would match what was on the previous slide. Um, air underscore port lookup. This should be inner join lookup.air underscore port. Um, and the lookup dot is what you would use in Druid SQL to signify that you want to query a lookup. Um, so this enables uh, using the classic Druid lookup feature, um, using the join keyword in SQL, which is nice for a, a variety of reasons. Um, one is, is kind of cosmetic. Uh, one reason is that it looks more like the SQL you're used to. Um, it helps analysts understand what's going on. It's more familiar to people. This, this kind of query can be generated automatically by a business intelligence application, whereas they cannot automatically generate lookup queries. So it aids in integration with those applications. Um, it, it aids in, in getting people to use Druid that aren't familiar with its language. Um, so that's all good stuff. That's all relatively cosmetic stuff. Um, there is also some stuff happening here uh, under the hood that's less cosmetic. One of those things is that the SQL layer actually knows what the lookups now. Um, so it can validate them at query time. Uh, it can validate them at planning time. Um, whereas with the lookup function, it didn't know what they were. It just knew they were strings. Um, if you pass in one that was invalid or had the wrong schema, it wouldn't be able to validate that, but now it can. So it improves the, the strength of the validator of the SQL queries. Um, Another uh, potentially more interesting thing that's happening under the hood is that the join operator has actually, um, it's actually a real join operator. So the lookup function in Druid was just modeled as a regular function. It was, it was almost like, um, it was not a UDF because it's built in Druid, but it's just a regular query function. The, neither the SQL layer nor the native query layer um, treated it any differently from say substring, for example. Um, the join operator actually is in, in Imply 3.3 and Druid 018, a real um, honest to goodness join operator. So that means uh, a bunch of things. It means you can do not just inner joins, you can also do left joins, um, uh, you can do cross joins, you can do all these, all these different kinds of joins. Um, it's able to do what a real join operator does, uh, which is um, depending on 
the depending on how many rows you have on each side of the of the join table with a particular um, or, or sorry on each side of the condition uh, with a with a particular value for the condition um, expressions uh, you may get one row out the other end you may get multiple rows you may get zero rows so you can use these joins as filters the way that you could use an inner join as filter um, you can use them to uh, even blow up the side of the data set and return multiple rows for any one input row, just like a just like a, you would expect from a join operator. Um, so it really has been, um, even though in this particular use case I'm calling out SQL join operator on Druid lookups, even though the classic Druid lookups are defined and uh, transferred out to the to the Druid servers the same way they've always been, um, the way their process has radically changed. Uh, when you write the uh, lookup function, like on this slide, um, when you write this lookup function, it's just applying as a regular, uh, regular uh, plain old function. And when you write the join keyword, it's it's not just syntactic sugar; it's actually running through a completely new uh, query engine. Um, so, okay, how does that new query engine work? Let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, so here's here's an example here. Uh, here's an example of doing a fact table to look up um, join execution. Uh, the fact table is the traditional Jira data source, and the the thing we're joining against is lookup. So this is that query from the previous slide. Um, okay, here here the query is actually written correctly. Uh, flights fact join lookup dot airport underscore join and lookup dot is how the SQL layer knows that it's a, a lookup table. Um, so uh, we're gonna get the description. We're gonna total the number of flights, um, and then and we're just gonna return the results of this relatively simple query. Um, so let's let's break down what's happening here. Uh, just like in every Druid query, um, the broker is is the service that first gets the query, and the Druid historicals are the services that have all the historical data and and process the row by row uh, aspects of the query. So. Um, the broker is what's responsible for parsing SQL and translating that to a native query. Excuse me, that hasn't changed. And it's also responsible for merging results and that hasn't changed either. Um, so what the broker is gonna do is it's gonna parse the SQL, it's gonna fan it out to the, it's gonna fan it out as native queries of historicals. Um, it's going to identify that these two historicals have segments related to the, the flights table, um, which is a regular Druid table. And um, just like uh, lookups always have been, they are broadcast to every server. So every historical has a, has a copy of this lookup table, um, airport uh, underscore join. Um, the join condition is going to be evaluated on the historicals. So each of those historicals um, then are going to, essentially for every row, they're going to get the destination airport ID from the, from the flights fact table. Uh, they're going to look that up uh, in the lookup table, uh, which is going to have a this is it's going to have a hash table uh, based on the key. So let's look it up in the lookup hash table, um, get the value, uh, or see if there is a value. If there is a value, then that row is going to be emitted. Um, and if there is no value and it's an inner join, the row will be uh, not emitted, uh, just as you would expect from inner join. And if there's no value and it's a left join, you'll get a null. Um, and uh, just like classic Jira lookups, uh, the lookups live on the heap. Um, so you, you can see here this sort of uh, hybrid solution that we have in, in Apply 3.3 in Jira 018, where you have the classic way of distributing and modeling lookups as string key and value that hasn't changed. But you have this, this new way of executing them that is radically different at both the SQL layer and even the row by row layer, because the, the row by row processing is different. Um, more about the internals. Uh, you have um, what you what you should expect as far as modeling your data. Uh, fact table, um, okay to have billions of rows, even trillions of rows. This is the classic uh, Druid scalability. Um, we're very careful that any feature that we introduce is always gonna always needs to be scalable to those levels. Um, and the lookup table, just like classic lookups, uh, this part hasn't changed. Um, should be no more than thousands to potentially millions of rows uh, on the right-hand side. Algorithmically, what's going to happen? 
um, is that we're going to build a hash table uh, for um, actually this shouldn't sorry this shouldn't say for every row and left and right hand side this should say for every right hand side table so for every right hand side table we're going to build a hash table um, then we're going to loop through the left hand side to find matching records on the right hand side using the hash table so we're going to scan the left hand side we're going to scan the fact table um, every row of the fact table we are going to get that key out look up and look up table um, to see if the join condition has matched or not. Um, this is why it's okay for the fact table to be as big as you want it to be because we're just going to scan through it one time. We don't have to buffer anything in memory. It's, it's a purely um, scan based constant time, uh, sorry, not constant time, but constant space uh, process. Um, and this is also why the lookup table is restricted in size. It's restricted in size because we have to build a hash table for it and the hash table is going to be stored in memory. Um, so this is what's, uh, this is what, uh, if you're a database um, person, you would call a broadcast hash join. Uh, 